In this series, we're going to continue looking into our zombie infested urban environment in Unity 2018.3, focusing on lighting and post processing. Hey everyone, this is Al over at GameDevHQ.com. Like and subscribe this video. Check out our other great tutorials on this site. And check out GameDevHQ.com to discover all the amazing assets and tools we have available to help you become an amazing game developer. In this particular video, we're going to focus in on lighting in Unity and how to use the post-processing stack. So let's focus in on lighting. The first thing I want to do is I want to add an HDR map to our scene. So where do I go get my HDR maps? Um, I usually go to a place called HDRI Haven. And just to take two seconds about this, um, the individual who makes HDRI Haven named Greg He's allowed these HDRIs to be basically free to the public. And the only thing he asks for is some Patreon help. And he's gone out and done all these amazing um, HDRIs. And you can see them pretty much here. If you click on the HDRI, you got indoors, outdoors, skies, etc., etc., etc. And when, let's say, you were to click on one, like this midday one, um, you could see the spheres and how they look. And then when you click on that, you can choose what type of download you want to do and it's completely free to use definitely give Greg some support here he's doing a great job for everyone in game development and uh, if you're looking to support people who are doing awesome work and helping everyone out he's definitely one to assist so from Greg I ended up grabbing a I ended up grabbing an HDR image right here and I'm going to add that to my skybox. So in order to do that, you need to create a skybox material. So let me just go ahead and delete this. And what you would do is go to create and go to new material and we'll call this skybox and drop this into here. And then in the shader, you wanna to go to skybox and you wanna use a panoramic image. And inside of here, you can drop in your Moonless Golf into this panoramic image. I'm going to set this to 0.8. And if it's set to a skybox panoramic, now your material should be discoverable. So just go ahead and grab your skybox and drop it in. And there you go. Now the entire environment is going to start rebaking based on this new skybox that we have in our scene. And... Also, what I'm going to do is go to my directional light and I'm going to bring this intensity down. I'm going to bring it down to like 0.2 because I really want my scene to be dark. So here's now my environment and how dark it is, which looks pretty decent. Now I actually want to use these light posts to be my main sources of light. I'm going to go to game object light and I'm going to do a not direct, direct spotlight. The spotlight is going to create a cone type of light. And what I want to do is go to my overhead view and I want to square it up. And I'm just going to take my spotlight and drop it right underneath my, um, my light right here. And I'm going to turn off 3D icons so it's not as obscene. And I'm just going to set these um, right underneath the light itself so it doesn't get clipped <clears throat> then in here I'm gonna increase my angle so that I get a wider angle of view here <clears throat> so I'm gonna keep my lights real-time for right now and I'm going to duplicate these lights all throughout our scene so I'm just gonna go to my top view just going to hit a duplicate and I'm going to set these under all of my light posts and it looks like it's starting to get a little cut off um, so I'm going to do a couple things I'm going to grab these I'm going to decrease my range a little bit and then let's see 
I think that looks pretty good right here. Now, for these outer ones right here, uh, Spotlight 3, and it looks like 6, and then... Let's see, this is 4 and 5. So these four right here... <clears throat> These particular spotlights don't necessarily need to be dynamic because you're not going to have your character run under these. These are just exterior. So I can actually take these from real time and I can set them to bait. So looking at this, it looks like I need to make those lights a little bit brighter. So I'm going to set this to, let's say, 6. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, intensity up to, let's say, 4 so that that intensity here matches the intensity from the real-time lights. Excellent! So if you look at these bait lights over in this area, this looks almost as intense as these ones over here. But if I were to create, let's say, a sphere, and I were to drop it into this scene, you can see how this sphere takes the light and it casts a shadow. But if I take it over here, you see how the light doesn't work and it doesn't cast a shadow? But we don't need it to cast shadows because shadows are expensive. So this is a good way to, uh, to make that work. I'm just going to go ahead and create a light object. So let's go ahead and reset this. And I'm just going to drop all these lights into here. Just so it's a little cleaner to work with. So then from here, now that I got my lights in my scene, I want to turn on my post-processing effect. Now, if you use the lightweight template, your post-processing volume should be in here. But if you didn't, all you need to do is create an empty game, job, game object. And in Add Component, just search for post-processing volume, and you drop it inside of here. Now, if you don't have this, you're gonna to need to go to your package manager. And inside of here, you'll be able to see post-processing and you're gonna to wanna to install this into your version of Unity. You're gonna want this version, the latest version. So you want your post-processing volume and then we're gonna to wanna to go here and create a new post-processing profile. And I'm just going to take this post-processing profile and drag it right down here. And then in my post-processing volume, I want to take this new post-processing profile and drop it inside this particular part. And you're going to want to make sure that your post-processing is set to post-processing layer. And then in your camera, <clears throat> you're going to want to add your post-processing layer and it's set to the post-processing layer. And once you do that, it's going to read your post-processing layers on 8, which is this particular layer. And I do believe there is a is global. Yes, you got to make sure you turn that on as well. And to test this out, you can go to, let's say, your um, grain and, you know, just add some grain into your scene and it should immediately be visible. If it's not, it's because this button has been turned on right here, which is your turning on and off uh, environmental uh, effects. So uh, since this works, I'm gonna remove my grain and we're just gonna do some quick post color effects in here. Um, so ambient occlusion does not work in the lightweight. Um, auto exposure does, bloom does, etc., etc. Um, let's see, chromatic aberration I believe does, color grading yes, depth of field no, grain yes, lens distortion I don't believe so, motion blur no, I don't believe screen space reflections work but vignetting does. So there's a couple of these things that are not applicable in the lightweight uh, profile. So I'm going to go to my color grading and we're going to do some tone mapping and I want to add some tint and I'm gonna adjust my post exposure and then I'm gonna go for more of a, uh, a walking dead kind of 
field. So I'm going to increase the contrast. Um, and then I'm going to go to my lift gamma and gain. And let's give this definitely more of a, a walking dead kind of feel. So did that real quick. It got really dark, really eerie. Um, you could spend a lot of time on this, but you know, I'm just trying, trying to bust through this pretty quickly. In the add effects, I'm also going to go to vignetting. And I've spoken about vignetting before, but it's an actual distortion in your um, um, lens that causes this look um, that we've gotten accustomed to. But it's a real common distortion that I like, so I like to add a little vignetting into my shot. Um, let me just go ahead and pull my exposure up just a little bit. And I may add a little more color. Okay, and then I want to go over to my bloom effect. And this is kind of cool to look at. So you have your intensity, right? And if I jack up my intensity, you notice how certain things get really bright before everything else does, right? Um, this is primarily due to your emission channel. So in your static elements, if you look at your street lights, um, your street lights have an emission filter on here. And there's this intensity level down here, which is really neat. It's uh, kind of an exposure intensity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my post-processing profile and I'm going to want to bring up my intensity and I'm going to adjust my threshold. And I want a little bit of glow from everything. But my big lights right here are just, they're just too much, right? So what can we do to fix this? Well, if you go to your HDR, you can actually decrease the amount of intensity these emission channel gives. And when you decrease that, now we can actually see the light and we can see the shape of the light, but it still has a glow. But now also everything else is kind of in the same vicinity. So you can get kind of um, uh, specialized in this and, and, and you, can, you can really uh, tap into uh, specifics. And then I also want to make sure I turn on fast mode and in my dirtiness, I want to have a texture that is a lens texture. So I'm going to drop that into my shot as well and increase the intensity. So it has this dirty lens kind of quality to it as well, which is, is pretty effective. Um, so I'm going to do just some minor little tweaks here. From here, I think all we need to do is in our Gain Depth HQ assets, if we go into VFX, there's some blood prefabs here as well. And so these are little blood splatters that you can add throughout your scene. So I can take my large blood, uh, let me just go ahead and focus in on it, and I can drag this, you know, anywhere in this particular scene and drag this down and kind of place it. Um, let's see, let me make sure I grab this. I'm gonna set this um, right here. I'll pull this up just a little bit. So you guys can see it in the ground. And we can actually just take um, a couple of these and different types of blood splatters. So you can take small ones, grab these, drag them in. And if you just do a quick reset and then drag it back out, you know, you can set your small blood splatter elsewhere on the scene and kind of fill up this entire environment with a bunch of little blood stains everywhere so it it got this very creepy and dystopian kind of feel to it so you know that's really quickly how you can use post-processing and how to create lights into your scene i hope this tutorial helps you out and we'll jump into some light probes in the next tutorial
And a special thank you to all the Plus and Pro members out there. Your support makes this channel possible and we couldn't do it without you. We don't have a Patreon page. What we focus on is our Game Dev HQ Plus and Pro programs. These programs directly support this channel and allows us to continue building amazing assets for you guys in your game development fields. So what does the Plus and Pro membership offer? Well, let me just tell you real quick. The Plus membership gives you access to our unique monthly loot crate to help you build your game levels and access to Plus challenges to help grow your C-sharp skills. The Pro membership gives you access to over 150 unique game assets for your video games. It also gives you access, unlimited streaming access, to all of our paid courses on GameDevHQ.com, as well as a bunch of other stuff. An amazing deal for an amazing price, and we really hope that you'll support us in this endeavor. Again, this is Al over at Game Dev HQ. I'm out of here. I'll see you next week. Talk to you soon.